This is the 49th lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to talk about attenuation in a fiber optic length and try to explain it in a fairly straightforward and quite visual way. You've probably seen a drawing like this many times. A fiber optic length transmitting signals, ones and zeros as pulses of light, down a fiber. But we're going to look at this in a different way, animated. What we want to focus on in this video is the attenuation of the optical signal. That decrease in the signal power level as it traverses the optical fiber from transmitter to receiver. Attenuation is the decrease in the signal level and it's caused by the attenuation of the pulse in the optical fiber caused by the scattering and absorption of the optical fiber and the losses as it traverses connections like two connectors making a connection or an optical splice. Here's the fiber optic link as the transmitter couples light into the fiber and transmits it down to the receiver where it's received and converted into an electronic signal. Well, that was neat, but way too fast to understand. So let's look at a fiber optic link in more detail, what all the components are that make it a fiber optic link, how it works, and see if we can make this a little bit more understandable. A fiber optic communication system starts with an electronic input from some kind of electronic communication system because what the fiber optic link is going to do is transmit data from a communication system on one side to a communication system on the other side. So it starts with that electronic input. Inside the transmitter, the electronic input is converted from a voltage to a current to drive a source. The source is either a laser or an LED and that converts the electrical signal to an optical signal. The optical signal is coupled into the optical fiber in the cable plant to be transmitted down the entire length of the fiber as pulses as ones and zeros as you see here. The cable plant will transmit the optical signal and it will be attenuated along the way. At the far end of the cable plant, the light pulses are presented to a receiver. In the receiver, there is a device called a photodetector that converts light to electrical signals. And then the electrical signals, which are photons to electrons, are amplified by an amplifier in the receiver and then transmitted out of the receiver as an electronic output, which is what the communication system on the far end really wants. So what the fiber optic data link is doing is taking an electronic input, transmitting it over some distance, and recreating the out input as an electronic output. And how well the link works depends on how well the electronic output mimics the electronic input. So here's our simplified drawing of, data, of a data link again. And you can see as the pulses go down the fiber, they are reduced in amplitude by the attenuation of the optical fiber. And as they go through connectors or splices, that little thing indicated in the center of the data link they will be attenuated also by the splice or the connector. And the signal that reaches the far end is the attenuated signal. So here's our electronic pulse at the far left of our drawing, getting ready to enter the transmitter where it will be converted to an optical pulse and transmitted down the optical fiber. The digital display in the middle of the picture will show us the optical power 
as it is attenuated going down the fiber. We're showing an 850 nanometer Vixel source starting at 0 dBm. And you probably know that's 1 milliwatt. So we're going to start at 0 dBm and watch what happens. The data link transmitter converts the electrical signal to an optical signal and couples it into the optical fiber. As the optical signal is transmitted down the fiber, the attenuation of the fiber reduces the power in the optical signal. In this segment, our signal not only suffered loss from the length of fiber, but it also passed through a connection, a mated pair of connectors with a loss of a half a dB. So the total amount of signal loss in this segment is a tenth of a dB from fiber loss and a half a dB for a connector loss for a total of six tenths of a dB. You can see our digital power meter continuing to count down as the power decreases and the pulse finally reaches the receiver and is converted into an electrical signal. So you can see that our transmitter coupled 0 dBm into the optical fiber and our receiver saw minus 2.2 dBm at the far end. So the attenuation of the optical fiber and the loss in the connector in the middle gives us a loss for the cable plant of 2.2 dB. Now technically that's a negative number. It went from 0 to minus 2.2 dBm. But we always say loss as just a number like 2.2 dB. And while it might be confusing as a negative number, saying loss makes it easy to understand. Every fiber optic link has a requirement for the amount of power at the receiver. The receiver power is the transmitter power reduced by the loss in the fiber optic cable plant. And what's required is that you have enough power, but not too much. The minimum amount of power required is such that you have an adequate signal to noise ratio or a low enough bit error rate for the link to operate efficiently. At the same time, you don't want too much power because the link will be overloaded and you'll get high bit error rate again. So that yellow square there defines the operating range of a typical fiber optic data link and shows you the minimum and maximum power. When you know that and you know the power out of the transmitter, you know the link loss that can be tolerated, and that's your link loss budget, and that's the subject of another lecture. Other lectures in the FOA series that you may want to see that are relevant to this discussion are lecture number 26 on loss budgets and lecture number 27 on fiber optic data links. We're the Fiber Optic Association the International Professional Society of Fiber Optics. Feel free to contact us if you have questions.